Christmas. Well, I survived. Santa broke into the house. It's all over now. The house guests are gone. The house is, house is a mess. Now that Christmas is over, it's time to start moving people around um, to get them where they're gonna spend their new year. So the problem with recording uh, in a corporate airplane, corporate airplanes don't have the cockpit doors like you see on an airliner. Best case scenario, you have a curtain that goes down behind you, but the passengers can see right into the cockpit. And a lot of the times you'll look back and they're all leaning on their chairs uh, watching what you're doing. I try not to record when we have passengers in the back just because I think sometimes it's all weird about the camera. I have a couple of empty legs coming up that uh, hopefully I'll be able to record. Uh, I encourage you, the viewer, to submit any questions or anything you want me to focus on as far as flying corporate jets or living this lifestyle, I guess. For now, I'm gonna show you some footage of a flight that I did a couple of weeks ago where on takeoff, another airplane had a little bit of an abnormality. On my last trip from New York to Chicago, I captured what pilots would call an abnormal situation. Yeah, it's all right. Sometimes, yeah, I've got a door pop. I like to trickle back and see Where's he at? His door popped open. Oh, is that what he said? Yeah. Was... <laughs> I looked out there and his door was cracked about that far. Was that that one that just took off? Yeah, that 310. This Cessna 310 on an IFR flight plan had its door pop open shortly after takeoff. See, doors pop open on little airplanes pretty frequently. The way the doors close on little airplanes is you slam the door, there's a pre-catch, and then a lock that comes down. It's not uncommon to even be able to lock the door, but it, the door never really catches. That's why you really want to check to make sure that the door is caught and locked. Once you're in flight, the air acting on the airplane actually causes a little bit of a vacuum and will actually hold the door open. So even if you're able to grab a hold of the, air, of the door as you're flying along, there's a good chance that you're not going to be strong enough or have enough leverage to close that door. The other thing is that the Cessna 310 only has one main cabin door, and it's opposite of where the pilot sits. So in order for him to reach across and grab hold of the door, he'd have to reach across the entire airplane. I used to open doors on students on purpose when I was a flight instructor just to see if they would do the right thing. And there really only is one right thing to do, and that's fly the airplane, fly the airplane, fly the airplane. In 1972, Eastern Airlines Flight 401 crashed into the Everglades and killed 101 people. Before the crash, the crew had noticed that a light bulb on the panel had burnt out. And they decided to go out over the Everglades and fix the light bulb so that they could be sure that the landing gear was down and locked. As they were circling the Everglades, all the crew members in the cockpit were so focused on changing the light bulb that nobody noticed that somebody had bumped the control yoke and started the airplane into a slow descent into the Everglades. 101 people died on that flight because nobody was flying the airplane. Twist Cessna 399 Sierra, can you cancel your IFR, sir, and then uh, circle VFR? Twin Cessna 399 Sierra, can you, can you cancel and circle VFR, sir? Circling clockwise. That's a perfect. Can't fly far. Nine nine Sierra, Roger. Then rider left. Uh, you want three zero runway three zero. Three zero. Nine nine Sierra, runway three zero. Clear to land. In this scenario, the pilot did the right thing. To a certain extent, he ignored what the tower was telling him partially because of the noise, but he was flying the airplane and he was telling the tower what he was going to do. In the end, this abnormal situation never became an emergency because the pilot flew the airplane, made a decision to come back to the airport, and did exactly that. He flew the airplane. The airplane ended up landing safely and I believe he just shut the door and took off and, and went about his day. So remember, if you ever run into a situation, abnormal or emergency, always fly the airplane. And as tacky as it sounds, there's the old adage that all the pilots use. It's always aviate, navigate, communicate. In that order. Fly the airplane, know where you're at, and then talk to the controllers. I'm going to try to post an aviation video every Saturday in flying schedule whatnot. Um, if it gets out of hand, I'm, I may have to delay by a couple of days. I guess, I guess that's a New Year's resolution. Gotta cut this dog's nails.
We go lay down. So here's to 2017. Stick with me. Uh, if you like what you see so far, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'm also on Twitter and Instagram. Although I'm not a big Twitter fan. Ah, Twitter. 100 and, what is it, 140 characters? I have a lot of stuff to say. It's hard for me to compress my thought into 140 characters. The hashtags and the mentions and the retweets and the trying to make peace with Twitter. Not impressed. <laughs> He's asleep. It doesn't help that the dog's also deaf, so I don't know why I yell at him. Can you teach a dog sign language?